I know y'all love cricket, but if you're not watching the World Series, man. They don't care. I You should. Game one of the World Series is one of the greatest baseball games ever played. And one of the best things about it is that there wasn't a team in it that Corbin likes. They were already skipping the intro. Just Hey, welcome back to our stupid Rex of Corbin. Oh, Rick. You can follow the Instagram and Twitter for the juicy content. Oh, mm. Thank you to Sports on Patreon. Follow us through the content. Uh, like trying to get the juice out of the plong. Today it's we a got a, uh, a new Shah Rukh Khan interview. Uh, this was at the La Carno Meets, the uh, La Carno Festival. Oh, yes. Um, it's at Cabinet about eight days ago. Got a lot of requests for it because it's Shah Rukh Khan, of course. Um, but uh, always nice to hear this man talk. He's, it is. He's a well-articulated man. He is. And he's a, he's a good listen. Farm That's an interesting sentence. Shop, but, uh, he's a well-articulated like man. Because what that cup, technically well, means yeah. is that he's well-articulated. He's All of his joints and his limbs move really well. He's well-endowed. Versus... I don't believe in the character. He's an articulate because man. Because my job, I think, is to make you believe in the character. The audience believe. I don't have to believe it. I don't finish a crime that is scene and keep crying three true. days later. I'm like, I'm going to cry. Did you cry? Yes, okay, so my job's done. <laughs> Welcome to La Carna It's true. It's true. A movie podcast Danny brought Dillard to you by, by UBS. Yeah, the goal, from what does it matter? It's true. Festival. If I believe it, Shavu what does it mean if the, the audience does it? Bollywood. Danny Dillard needs everybody, everybody on the films. set to believe He's it. worshipped by billions and over 30 years, he's forged a career that has made him one of the biggest actors on the planet. It's nice of them to say that about Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Alex, for having me. Um, so backs. you're here at Locarno to receive the special award. Uh, well, How many special awards Thank you so much, for? Um, you know, it's been 30 years in this career. Just how different is the industry now to how it was when you started? Two, three things, Alex, if I was to uh, try and think of it. One, of course, the technology part. Sure. Uh, that's a given. That's changed a lot. It's changed way more in the last five years than even in the last 20 years uh, before that. Mm. Um, it's maybe, I would say, easier to make films. Or not easier, just very different and faster to make films. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can imagine even more. And, and it's just not the VFX. It's even the shooting, the lights. What we have here right now is so much more different. The microphones, everything has become a little uh, more um, driven towards easing uh, doing your work. Yeah. Um, earlier, you had a lot more you know, camera sounds and things happening, lots of distractions. <laughs> So Camera that's sounds. one part. The technology has <laughs> really made a huge difference. Um, was age as there. far as storytelling is concerned, I may be wrong. Maybe I'm behaving uh, way wiser than my uh, understanding and knowledge. But I think earlier films were a bit more personal uh, storytelling mm -hmm. or, or social issues which affected you personally more. Maybe post-war, post-depression, whatever. Uh, and you took this personal story and uh, maybe the word is wrong. Uh, I should not say cozy, but... Uh, intimate. Intimate, yeah. An intimate way of storytelling, which could be larger than life. It could be bigger. Uh, I think over the years, I noticed that the stories became for the masses, where they're more aspirational, mm. where people want to identify with the characters or the situations you are in. It could be anti-establishment also, depending upon the sign of times. So they became more for the masses. Now... I was just, just before you came in, I was talking to a gentleman and we we're talking about how social media has uh, come in and everybody's a filmmaker, yeah. which is a good thing. Uh, anyway, I think in films, everybody's a filmmaker. <laughs> um, so uh, even my kid can make a movie yeah. on Instagram and some of them are really nice. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so there's more intermingling of life and filmmaking. Mm. Uh, so it was very individual understanding, maybe even more intellectual. Then it became more massy, more approachable, uh, more identifiable. And now it's just intermingled. You can tell a story and one of the mediums of telling the story is your telephone. Mm. Uh, and I think that is filmmaking also. So I think the newer generation with social media and telephone in your hand uh, don't even require this technology to make a film. Mm. Um, Soderbergh is making a film on an iPhone. So it's awesome. I think it's... Uh, um, I think I'm 58 now, so another 10 years, I'm okay, I'll, I've, I've passed that stage. <laughs> but the younger people will have to deal with this intermingling of storytelling through cinema, which is accessible to everybody. Do you think that that type of new storytelling will be a rival, maybe even a threat to traditional grand cinematic visions? No, I think it'll just be quicker. 
it just be faster <laughs> it'll be uh, uh, intercut faster you know because i find it that i my kids love to see my i have an uh, 11 year old mm. i have a 23 year old and a 27 year old and uh, so i can kind of see it, uh, the variance of how they like films and i'm 58 so i know how Al i Pacino like it you know and yes i like to explain <laughs> things a little more I like He's him, what they say is mm. He could be his uh, dad. Well, the younger one, <laughs> by a long shot. Him, so we opened the scene in Italy. Yeah, yeah, Italy, we understood, yeah. Uh, <laughs> AC Milan. Yeah, move on, <laughs> you know. So <laughs> they know what the setting is. They sure. want to get to the crux of it. So maybe the storytelling will become, uh, I hope it doesn't become reels, but it will become a little faster. But I think the bigness of sitting in a room and watching mm. it, Um, you know, sometimes I say people say, "Oh, we're watching it at home," but the television screens are two hundred inches now, <laughs> yeah, so yeah. they are actually watching it in a cinema. So I, I think uh, the grandness will remain, just the speed of storytelling may change. You'll be showing Dave Das. Can you tell me what that film meant for your career? You'll be showing Dave Das. Can you tell me what that film meant for your career? Yeah, so I I've grown up. Uh, my parents, <laughs> my mom, my dad. the whole there are generations and generations of people who've liked devdas there are 13 devdas that have been made in india uh, it's a sharat chandra novel 13 people have yeah. adapted it and for some reason it's a huge hit every time mm. uh, when you say huge hit in terms of people wanting to go and see it i i didn't know when mr bansali who's a fantastic filmmaker um, and i think this would be his second or third film then uh, we met for the film and uh, when he narrated the film to me there are very few films that i start liking because of the dialogues because they are so theatrical mm. and over the top and um, uh, and i come from theater so for me uh, uh, being subtle is a problem <laughs> <laughs> so i love this whole you know comedy really? uh, style of <laughs> we would have never guessed sharuk la- larger than life and dialogues <laughs> making some different kind of sense. So I didn't like about it, having that issue sometimes because of your theater through. background as yeah, well. Absolutely, it's true. And being small is yeah, very difficult. Be doing it. Uh, Especially and coming I moved from on, theater. Yes, you need to be. But I was bigger. very keen to do a film it's for in more, my far more parents had passed away it's by the time I in film. joined films. Both of them were um, not alive. And uh, I don't know, for some reason I always felt I'll make films which are very big hh mm. uh, so that my mom and dad can see them from heaven. Mm. Uh, so such a childish thought. I still think my mom's a star, and it works. I think I, I even know the star she is. So I I just felt that if I made Devdas, she would really like it. She would appreciate. Mm. I didn't think I could play the character. Mm. I didn't think because Mr. Dilip Kumar had played it. I think Mr. Segal, some of the greatest artists in our country, Uttam Kumar ji, they had some great artists that played it, and flawlessly. Mm. I don't think mine is uh, uh, so brilliant or good. but in spite of a lot of senior actors telling me don't do it i just wanted to do it that you know maybe other mom might did they've thus which we sure. used to mm. watch so for me it was that part mm. it was working with mr bansali who i think is a one of the most dramatic uh, theatrical beautiful filmmakers in the country got an opportunity to wear a lungi <laughs> and then i hope i played him less of a loser mm. uh more of a non committing man um, who had his own reasons to not commit to love uh, because i found uh, otherwise the character being a bit of a loser you know shirking away from duties shirking away from commitment oh. so i just wanted to play him a little uh, i i didn't want you to feel uh, love for him mm. but i didn't want you to hate him and like him for being an alcoholic who runs away from every girl that he falls in love with so i i, I just uh, wanted him to be indescribable i hope i have achieved that and uh, i think he's the way you p- p- perform him is very universal i think i can i the the worst parts of myself can identify with him you know are you an alcoholic too i am <laughs> 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 no i i i understand what you're saying because for me i, I was way young then mm. to be able to appreciate those kind of feelings was difficult to be honest mm. uh, but yeah overall I, i haven't seen it recently i'll see it right uh I, i i hope i've done it well i i got uh, i was very nervous doing that film mm-hmm. uh, very difficult also you know as i actors grew up too. you know you want to play it. a madman you want to play um a person who can't see probably you want to play an alcoholic so these are the four five tropes you have of wanting to do roles <laughs> so it was one of my tropes that you know i've been alcoholic and uh, so i drank a little on the sets uh Did just that help oh, method okay. adjacent hell yeah i got the best actor award yes <laughs> 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 but I started drinking after the film yeah so that was one <laughs> downside to it um I mean I was going to ask yeah. actually have I there can, been I usually always 
that you haven't been drink able on set if I to do yet. Drink, drink, still if I, if I can. got your eyes on that you think Sometimes they don't allow. Yeah. Then it depends on how much yes, you have Alex, to drink. I, I'll be very honest. I don't take myself too seriously as an actor. Um, because I, I have a different way of thinking about acting. Mm -hmm. I do believe that you don't, you know, I, I meet a lot of actors and I respect them a lot and I think they're wonderful. Um, they start believing the character that they're playing, uh, you know, and they think, a lot of actors talk to me like this. This character won't say this. Oh, yes. No, 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 this character, this line can't. And I'm like, you are the creator of the character. You can say what you want. You're the boss. You're the boss. You're the one who's made, just do what you feel like doing. Oh, well, you're Shower And Khan. maybe that's Usually why. the writers are the boss. Uh, <laughs> my enactment is a little uh, different. <laughs> perhaps not pure. You can compared say what to you how others do it. I don't believe in the character because my job, I think, is to make you believe in the character. The audience believe. I don't have to believe it. I don't finish a crying scene and keep crying three days later. I'm like, I'm gonna cry. Did you cry? Yes. Okay. So my job's done. So I play it very differently. I'm very honest about it. Mm. Um, I think. Um, so um, God, I would love hair. to play a lot of roles, a lot of characters. I don't know if how differently I can play them. Uh, so I'm not stereotyped. I'm sure. hero type. I play them like a hero. I yeah. play them larger than life. He always questions his So I don't know how much ability. appreciation there is for that. I think it's genuine Lots of too, things yeah. I want to do. I want to do a bad guy now again. I think he's more talented than he gives himself credit I think for. I have a new way of playing a bad guy. Cool. Um, I want to play uh, some of the action stuff that I wanted to do. I did last year. Um, now I want to play uh, an assassin. Uh, yeah, why not? Yeah, no, so things like that. So more roles. And then within the roles, I'll figure out what character to play. Yeah, but every morning I wake up with a new thought, yeah. Um, well, speaking of your action stuff, uh, Jawan is such a great film. It's so fun and dynamic. Jawan. And crazy. And I, Jawan. But, you know, it's very different from uh, Dev Das. And I wondered if there was a genre which you most enjoyed the process of making. So what, what I do is because uh, I'm in the happy space that I can pick and choose the films. Mm. Uh, God has been kind. I think the audience has been too kind for 35 years. <laughs> that I, I just always feel, yeah, okay, I have a choice that I can make. Um, so every year or every six, eight months, I wake up with the thought, okay, now, you know, I want, I want to do a horror film. Oh, do it. And Please do. Do it, Shahrukh. Um, and if I don't, I have a plan B. Let's do comedy. <laughs> so I'm waiting for someone to offer me a horror film for four or five months. And if it doesn't come okay. through, uh, then I'll kind of, uh, you know, go for the comedy. Um, so there is always, um, so when I was during COVID um, and the two years that I didn't work after zero, I just decided I want to do an action film. I became uh, uh, a little impudent about it. I want to do action. If anybody gives me action, I'm going to do action. And then... Uh, I'm sorry, I've done it twice. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, tw uh, so two years, I didn't work. And then I just said, no, I'm going to do only an action film. Nobody gives me an action film. So I waited, waited, waited. And during COVID, nobody was really making films, but people would offer. Mm. And I felt it's not rude to say, listen, if you're doing an action film, I'm part of it. Because you know, nobody's making films right now. So you, know, you can tell them this. It won't so seem too rude. And then I think a couple of people succumbed. Uh, my friend uh, Aditya Chopra, who had made Dilwale Dulaniya Le Jayenge with me, who thinks I'm a waste as an action hero, he thinks <laughs> I should be playing emotional roles, and Siddharth Anand, who directed the film. So I think they just succumbed and say he's being spoiled, let's give it to him. So I, I think of a genre that I want to do, mm -hmm. and then the role I'd like to play, mm -hmm. and then hopefully develop the character with the directors that I work with. So that's the process that follows. So I really also wanted to do, uh, uh, participate, you know, uh, the South Indian cinema has a different language, mm. uh, the way they say the same stories. And I'd never done a film uh, of that genre. And I was really dying to do it. I didn't want to do a remake. Mostly Hindi films from the South, they just remake the South mm -hmm. Indian films. So I didn't buy rights for any film. I worked with Mr. Mani Ratnam, who I think is one of the greatest filmmakers in the world. Uh, but I hadn't done a South Indian uh, genre film, you know, where everything, the hero, it, it's, it's a more hero-oriented film, where everything, the way he walks, the way he talks, the way he smokes, the way he kills, the way he shoots, is all enhanced. You know, it's, it's outstanding. So um, Javan was that. So I was really, really, really happy that after 30 years of working in the film industry, I got to uh, live my dream of doing an action film. Uh, now, like I said, yeah, maybe after another six months, maybe I'd like to do a comedy, yeah, a little gentler film. And then I hope some people watch your interview and write a comedy and come and offer it to me. Do you, I mean, do you find it easier to make an audience laugh, gasp or cry? <clears throat> so I'd be honest, I think, um, I have an innate sense of humor yeah. and I can make people laugh. 
but it's very inappropriate times also <laughs> so i try to control myself <laughs> i'm told by my team all the time so don't people don't understand your humor and and now people become very sensitive Alex. several billion people would disagree you know <laughs> but now people have become very sensitive yeah. you, know, you say something and everybody somebody gets disturbed so it's better to uh, not have a sense of humor <laughs> uh, as an actor i think comedy is very difficult yeah i uh, think it's very very it's the hardest, it's, the most. it's very difficult it's the one that there's most actors fail at it it's i mm-hmm. i i failed also it's very often and jim carrey know, on the set <laughs> everybody laughed and i see the scene yeah the hardest thing to do is make some yeah, it's, it's make very, somebody laugh and I it's got to be genuine Chennai express and that was a big learning experience uh, and it did well and people laughed at the jokes and i was really relieved and i've jumped i've not jumped into a comedy quickly after that i'm mm. like waiting because it is a difficult job personally i can make people laugh uh, i never thought i'd make people cry uh but i met some really wonderful ladies in germany 10 15 years back and i tell this story to everyone so people might have heard this um i asked them why do you like my films in in germany they were really loving my films because the language was different the emotions are different um and these two old ladies told me very sweet ladies they said you know we have a button for making coffee we have a button to go up the stairs on an escalator you are the button for making us cry so <laughs> i realize i'm a button for crying so yeah i i i also i think it it happens because i genuinely respect people's emotions sure i understand emotions i may not appreciate it but i understand them mm. so if you're behaving in a certain if you go on a rant and start screaming and shouting i may not appreciate it but i know there must be something with alex mm. and i respect that So it's the I, drinking as we discussed. Yeah, so yeah, it could be that. <laughs> we find out by the end of the interview what's, what's wrong with you. <laughs> But uh, so I think that's why I'm able to emote. <clears throat> I'm very sincere about it. Mm. So even if I may not cry in that place or I may not be emoting for a certain reason, at that moment I believe somebody else somewhere does and I should be very very sincere to them. Mm. Gaspard I don't think I can scare anyone my 10 year old is not scared of me so I don't think I can make anyone scared I I can make whatever faces no <laughs> no I can I don't think I can make people gasp uh, for any reason It's good to know your limitations I am completely <laughs> limited on that front Um you've made over 100 films but as you as you mentioned you know during covid and just after you took a few years off what do you miss most about a pr- the production of a film when you're not working Um, I don't know. I uh, I think the darkness of the room, the quietude, and then it's very it's very nerve wracking. Mm. You know, when we didn't have sync sound, then you could talk as much as you want, <laughs> knock on the wire, <laughs> do anything you wanted. People are talking and screaming, and you dub the film later, mm. right? And you could think that okay, I could improve upon my performance also because of I get the line wrong, it's all right. We'll make it happen after the edit. No. Uh, but the first time sync sound came in some years back now no, many years back it was very scary you all alone mm. and it seems everybody is listening to you and everybody's watching you and everybody's hoping you get it right yeah, do they this. not they worked with me often enough to know he won't get it right <laughs> but this is everything's on to you and it was very nerve wracking and then slowly you got used to the focus of you know this attention being on you mm. Uh, for those you know so to be honest alex you go on set for 8 10 hours but you work a couple of hours only sure you know, because the shots are then think t- take time to set up so you realize 2 3 hours a day there is this whole world of 200 people focused on you and you need to deliver and it's not a challenge it's actually uh, your best game face it's like yeah i'll do this yeah 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 it'll be nice just 2 hours a day and and they pay me a lot for this also 2 <laughs> <laughs> like hours a day i think i miss that I miss that uh money? it's not that I'm self obsessed I want people to look at me I'm very shy in personal life sure I it's very strange I'm there's a dichotomy that I'm very shy and I'm very happy in public performing mm. and I can do both at ease uh, when upon the call upon to do in, so in actors. but I'm not uh, I'm not someone who wants the uh, the focus and the lights on him but those two hours is what i missed where you are also very focused mm. it's like okay i have to get this right and i don't take it for granted i don't take it like you know there'll be another shot there'll be a retake for me uh messing up your line uh missing your mark mm. um screwing up another actor's um uh, you know l- m- dialogue or i i it, i i get very disturbed gives you pain yeah it gives me pain so i want to get it right and i love the fact that eight ten people from all departments the sound the light the camera the director 
good for me, good for me, good for me. Oh. So I think I miss that. Like gold stars from teachers. Yeah, gold <laughs> stars from teachers. So, so during COVID, nobody was saying good for me. <laughs> nobody gave a damn. I was all over the place. And I found the second best thing to uh, acting. I realized I love cleaning house. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I love vacuuming. I love cleaning cupboards and going into nooks and crannies and cleaning everything up. Everything Do you find up, it yeah. meditative? I think so. Yeah. I think so. Therapeutic. I, I don't know what I find. Oh, I just oh, find yeah. it lovely. I just... Uh, That's so I, interesting. I That's a very, very helpful uh, habit to develop. I, I think so. The household's very happy. Yeah. <laughs> They'd rather me clean up the house than go out and act. I love vacuuming. Uh, maybe they all start... Uh, I don't mind doing dishes. ...seeing after some And dishes. Yeah. I like dishes. Got it. Got it. I like hand-washing dishes. Stuff. Stay at home and clean up the house. There's some things so I despise. So if you and naturally consider yourself a shy person, but you discovered that you, you found something within yourself when the lights were on you, when was that? How did you realize... No, actually, being up there can be a good thing and not a scary thing. So, I like if I'm somebody else, mm. uh, whatever name, I'm, I'm playing Alex, I'm playing Rahul, I'm playing Devdas. <laughs> You're good playing. name, I'm Rahul. Okay, doing <clears throat> all the silly things that Alex does <laughs> and not feel ashamed or feel odd. I'm like, that's Alex, that's not me. So, I think that's Alex the Alex is all right. <laughs> and Alex is all right. He drinks yeah. and he's. <laughs> <laughs> I like Alex. So my whole thought was that mm. if I am not me, mm. uh, then I'm good. Uh, or if I'm with That's really, really close Depp. friends, then I'm good. Uh, you Johnny know, Depp so hates himself. My close friend is just my family <laughs> and people that I work with closely. I don't have too many friends, which is not a sad thing. I'm not trying to get empathy here. <laughs> you don't have to have too many friends. But I, I enjoyed, uh, uh, you know, with few people. Then I'm myself and I'm not shy. And then I can joke about and do all the silly things that everyone does, with my kids especially. Uh, I like the company of children much more. Mm. I'm less shy in the company of children because you can make a fool of yourself and it's entertaining. It's not looked down upon or questioned. Everything is fun. Uh, but otherwise, I'm very shy. You know, if I was sent to a party or they're going to take me for a dinner at Locarno, I'll be very shy there. <laughs> Very, very shy. I won't even be able to tell which glass to drink wine from. <laughs> so I'll, I'll be very shy there. But I'll try to make do. I'll try and be somebody else and uh, have fun there. Um, so I, I, I don't know. I think just when I act, I feel I'm someone else. And I can do what I want. It's actually venting. Mm. Where, whatever I can't do, I guess, as a shy person, I'm able to do as the uh, character who could do anything, you know. I think sometimes my directors have to hold me back. Listen, don't go flying off the handle. It's, 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 you just only do this much. I'm like, no, I'm wild now. Let me do everything. So, yeah, it's a... That's it's a, better it's to do that than your, say, please uh, give me more. Personality please. you have, but sure. I found my peace with it. And I, I, I don't know when, maybe in theater, the mm. first time I went on stage with so many people watching. I've, I've done some theater for eight, nine years with an Englishman, actually. He taught me all I know of acting. Uh, and I, uh, when I started speaking on stage, and I didn't have the proper English accent, mm. uh, and I remember the others were, uh, you know, very uh, Shakespearean uh, method of speaking. Mine wasn't, and I was a little awkward. And he looked at me and said, "It's okay. You just go on. You just fly. As long as people are appreciating." I think I like the fact that people are just standing there and say, "Okay, okay for me." I think that's the whole point. Uh, as myself, I can't do that. We started off by talking about some of the changes in the industry. Um, and, you know, over the last decade, you know, as Netflix has grown, a lot of your films are, are now on Netflix. And I wondered if that's helping you reach a new audience who'd never quite got the opportunity to see your films before. I hope so. I hope they're... I'm, I'm watching a lot of Spanish films. Yeah. So they better also watch my films. <laughs> I'm watching French films. I'm watching Italian films. So I, I hope so. You know, see, the idea has always been, for me... The larger picture now, and I again don't say it with the, I don't say it patronizingly because I've been, I've been working for 30, 35 years in sure. the Indian film industry. And what I would like to be able to garner uh, and get is to get Indian cinema noticed mm. internationally. Mm. Uh, whether I'm part of it as an actor or a producer, as a light person, as a camera person, <laughs> as a writer, uh, whatever. I just want, because, you know, it has given me everything that I have. Uh, Indian cinema, Indian audience, Indian people. Um, Indian film watchers, uh, they've given me everything I have. They've made me fulfill the dream that I had. So I owe everything to Indian cinema. But in return, if I'm able to participate in something, 
that takes Indian cinema and puts it on a world map. So yeah. a lot of people ask That's me. That's what we're, we've years, been doing. So oh, you, you can haven't done come a talk film. over here. Well, Hi, haven't we're white. Have been offered? Maybe no. <laughs> Not too many, to be honest. Uh, but if they were, would I? I mean, I know you need I our help. <laughs> uh, sure. Because for me, it's very important that I respect the place that I began in, <laughs> started in, which has given me everything. Can I take <laughs> my Indian film industry uh, and tell my Indian stories to you? Uh, I mean, you're from England, so you are half Indian. <laughs> take it to somewhere else and say, okay. Like, when, 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 because of Netflix and Prime, we are watching stories from parts of the world. See, I'm a film person. It's my duty and job to find other films and watch them. Sure. At the festival like Locarno. And, that you know, was fantastic. Discover cinema. But even if I wasn't a film person, because of these OTT platforms, now I'm having access to every film. Yeah, so funny. So if Indian films can reach there, and if our storytelling... Um, uh, you know, uh, can somehow invoke some kind of feelings in people, though the language is a barrier, but because of the way it's now translated or has uh, subtitles or sometimes even, you know, dubbed. Yeah. It, it'll be really nice. It would be, for me, telling Indian stories to a bigger audience uh, because doing it for a theater is difficult, mm. you know, because we have a limited, I, I don't know, Indian films we release about seven, 8,000 theaters while Hollywood films release 25,000 theaters. We may not be able to compete with that. Unless you're Clint Eastwood. audience size also. Um, so <laughs> you hear about it's, that? It's an amazing platform that, you know, we have this place where we can showcase Indian stories internationally to everybody. Um, do you think you'll act forever? Will I act forever? Yeah. Till the day I die. He wants to die on set. Um, you heard I, that? My, my life's dream is to uh, yeah. somebody to say action. What you saw. And then I die. And there's a cut. And then I don't get up. He said, it's okay, it's action. It's over now. Please get up. And I said, no, till you all say it's okay. <laughs> till you all say it's okay for me. Yes, I'd love to act uh, forever. I'd, uh, it's, and it's not something that I'm, like I said, I'm not a very serious actor. And I am found out some uh, amazing uh, uh, internal things about acting to mm. showcase to people. Uh, I just celebrate the joys of life sure. uh, through my acting. For me, uh, if I'm able to entertain, to me, to be able to create in what, whatever sense, mm. uh, not in a mad, amazing mad scientist type create, just just create, uh, to share joy, to give love, uh, art, uh, painting, singing, music, all of them mean the same thing. Uh, to me, it's uh, there is no difference in, you know, if I can entertain you for two minutes, it's love. Uh, if I can love someone for 50 years, that's entertainment. If I can entertain someone for uh, 30 seconds, it's creative. So I, I find it all uh, uh, different names for the same thing. And I really enjoy uh, sharing this joy, making people have a feeling for an hour or so and uh, enjoy themselves. And an hour or sometimes so? Sometimes you miss the mark. Hmm. Uh, you, that's the marathon? only thing that makes me sad. That, oh, why did I let down people? Why couldn't uh, I give them enough love? or entertainment, or creativity, or whatever the name you give it. Um, well, thank you very much for talking to me. I'm sure tonight's screening is going to be great. I'm going to be there. Uh, great to meet you. Thank you, Alex. Thank you very Cheers. much. I want those chairs. No kidding. Those they look cool. They swivel? Yeah. I need them for the... Those are swivelies. I need the, for the <coughs> layer. Yeah, as usual. Yeah, what a shock. Probably... I mean, there's a lot of well-articulated people in India. Articulate. Artic what? Articulate. Articulate. Yeah. If they're articulated, they're... Yes. Uh, people in India. But I don't know if anybody's more than Shah Rukh Khan. It oh, might, no. It might be a, a equal in terms of like... Um, I mean, Amitabh is a very good speaker. Very, yeah. very captivating. Very, so is um, Nasir. Um, and then we've seen a lot of people that are... But I mean, it'd be, I'd be hard-pressed to say somebody in, <laughs> that I've seen in Indian cinema be more... Uh, especially in an interview setting, yeah, he uh, he has that it factor that you just you you can't teach, you can't do anything, which is why one of the reasons he's been so successful. He has that factor in him. He's yeah. an interesting person. Yeah, um, I don't. I think he's, and I know it comes from a humility standpoint. But I think he's a much more talented actor than he gives himself credit for. Agreed. Um, I, I mean, I he knows his limits. I, I feel like. But also, I feel like he lets those control him sometimes. Yeah, I think he limits himself sometimes. Yeah. I, I think he under, I think he underestimates himself. Yeah. And I don't think there's anything anybody could tell him yeah. that would change that, other than somebody say, if if you know, if Christopher Nolan reached out to him, 
yeah. and said, you underestimate yourself and I want to work with you, I think Shah Rukh would look at himself. Mm. But it, it takes that level of somebody that he would look at and go, okay, you know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, and I wholeheartedly agree with what he said. And I think most actors would. It's one of the reasons why, you know, I always apologize and say I'm going to add to Sanford Meisner's definition of what it is to act because Sanford Meisner said acting is living truthfully under imaginary circumstances. And that's what a, that's a what really an idiot. It's a really good definition, but it's, it's always fallen short for me because if as an actor, if you just take that at face value and you as the actor believe your the character, Unless that translates to the audience, yeah. which is why I've added it's living truthfully under imaginary circumstances and being believable doing it. It doesn't matter how well you and I feel. We are If we walk off set and we're like, oh, I was so that character. I felt everything. And it didn't translate. Yeah. You didn't do your job. Yeah. Conversely, there have been times I have done a performance of some kind, especially in theater. And the whole cast has felt the show sucked. Mm -hmm. And we come out and to our surprise, everybody jumps to their feet. Mm -hmm. And you're like, I had nothing. And it worked. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I, when I was young, I, I did a lot of study of all the, all the different methods. And Stanislavski was he's, well, that's, probably, probably my favorite. But he's the foundation. As you, you get older, you just develop your own. Yeah. You're like, this works for me. I um and it it works for the audiences and stuff like that and so I don't much if somebody says you know they do what Daniel Day Lewis does and the product is there and I'm like great yeah but if somebody else gets is you like there. just you know John Cox just fucking act exactly there's <laughs> like, nothing that's great <laughs> there's nothing particularly meritorious about any one process what's meritorious is the end result yes like I recently was watching. Uh, um, disclaimer and it occurred to me oh I have a new way to describe acting in ways that I've, I've never thought of before and it was because I had seen something that was bothering me I had seen something by an actor that was making it really clear that his actions weren't spontaneous mm -hmm. they were chosen yeah. and that gave me the clarification of oh acting is really if you boil it down it's making chosen behavior seem spontaneous Yep, that's it and whatever you do to get there. And it has it, it's the audience that matters. It is it has nothing to do with whether you believe it, you like it. Yeah. It's one of the reasons a lot of actors don't watch their work because yeah. they don't like the work. Yeah. Because they don't believe the work, but the audience does, and that's what matters. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then <laughs> one of my biggest uh I whenever I do directing stuff or if, if I'm working on something for the channel, um, or just a short film in the past that I've done. But I'm the editor. I'm the director. Mm. I have a really hard time. I'm like, I like it. I can't tell anymore if it's good. Right. <laughs> right. You're too in it. Yeah. I'm like, like the million video, which I know turned out very well. At the end of it, I was like, I hate this song. Uh, and right. <laughs> I can't tell if anybody will like this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because, yeah. I've and that's why you typically, for, you, over a year. Listen, I, that's why, like, for example, I, I wrote Barbarian. Mm hmm. And I remember the first time I said the line sitting in a chair like this to because if you don't know anything about it, I play multiple characters, two main guys who were talking back and forth. And I remember sitting in the chair doing this and thinking, this is going to is this going to even freaking work? This is going to be garbage. And then the first person I showed it to besides the kids, I saw showed it to my, my, my buddy Julian and I just did a reading of it for him. And when it was over, I looked at him. I said, so is this any good or is this crap? Because you get to the point. You don't know. You're too. You can't see the forest for the trees. Mm -hmm. And you can be deluded. It's like you, you've seen people on talent shows. They suck, and they're told they suck, and then they get mad and say, "You don't know what you're talking about." I, you know, you don't want to be deluded in that way. Yeah. So and theater's obviously different as well because that's you don't get an editing table. Correct. They have their own challenges. I mean, yeah. there's there's things in theater that are unique to theater. There's things in film that are unique to film. Example, when he said, "It's why I love Robin Williams so damn much," is the biggest man in the world knew how to be small. And and that's something in today's theater, they want you more often than not. Film acting translates to stage now. It didn't before. Yeah. But it's extraordinarily difficult to be big naturally. I'm a big, loud person, and to go. Mm -hmm. And I he obviously has the same yeah. 
challenge. Um, but he's always so fun to listen to. Yeah, he really is. And man, would we like to talk to him? Oh. A hundred percent. Anyways, well, that was great. Uh, hope you enjoyed the uh, watching the interview with us. If uh, there's other interviews we should watch, uh, please let us know which will be our next Shah Rukh Khan film that we should watch. And when are you watching Devdas with your uh, wife? I need to watch it. Yeah. Uh, people have been screaming at us to watch it for a while. Steph has never seen it. And yeah. She, she loves Shah Rukh Khan. You guys, they, should, you guys should do a watch They along. also scream at us to watch My Name is Khan because she's not seen that one yet. And she, Oh, wow. She loves Kajol. Um, oh yeah, that from that. And you know my opinion on yeah. that one. That's my favorite Shah Rukh Khan performance. Both of those I haven't seen since we watched. Yeah, I haven't seen My Name Is Khan since. It's not one you want to revisit a lot. Yeah, not yeah. a happy movie. And we watched those around the same time. Yeah. I want to say it was April. You should do so. You should watch along to them. May. I think of the first year because we didn't watch along either one of those. We oh, just yeah. reviewed them. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I had obviously such an opinion of the first Def Dumps. Yeah. <laughs> How would you do that, though? That's tough because you'd have to time it just right to do a watch along with your kids. What? You'd have to time it or have somebody here, like have someone watching the kids to oh. do a watch along of DevDos. You'd have to do it when the kids are sleeping. Yeah, we always do yeah. watch alongs when okay. they're sleeping. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and sometimes it's in multiple parts. Yeah. <laughs> Because <laughs> they up. wake up. Um, but anyways, let us know uh, what our next Shower Con movie should be down below. Josh!